Good morning. It is, what is it, Thursday, August 3rd. First thing I want to address, Fatima on Spotify said, thank goodness I didn't listen to a douche on the internet. You are completely right, Fatima. Uh, You do not listen to a douche on the internet. I have been wrong this entire week. I blame work. I blame lack of focus on the market. (laughs) I don't blame anything other than myself. Honestly, Fatima, um, when you play earnings, you're right sometimes, you're wrong other times. I will tell you the one thing, and I just went over Qualcomm for – uh, for Trevor on, 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 and I went over Qualcomm. Hey, anything, uh, you know, even if it goes under 110, I think you're still good at 117. Uh, I think at some point in time you get to the 150 mark. I went over it. If you want to watch it, it's on the live YouTube. Um, uh, I won't put it in the podcast, but I, I do think the difference between myself and a lot of other douches on the internet is you buy good companies with good earnings and good uh, management with good products. If you buy those things, even if there's an earnings surprise, you're okay to make a decision of holding it. A good, for instance, let's take a look at our savvy trader, uh, first of all. Palantir, I'm killing it, 32%. PayPal, I'm up 7%. Meta, I'm up 4%. AMD, I'm down 1%. Netflix, I'm down 1%. Uber, I'm down 2%. Ulta, I'm down 3%. NVIDIA, I'm down 5%. Sedge, I'm down 24%. That was a gamble. But the big deal is I'm down 600, you know, 500 bucks. It's, it's an $800 investment that's down, um, well, I guess it's down 622. I don't, oh, it's trading at 195. So I'm down $622. Am I going poor over $622? No. You, know, you, you look at Palantir, I'm up $460. You look PayPal, I'm up $488. So the key point is Sedge is not killing my earnings at $622. I'll be fine. Uber, we'll get back to 52. It was at 52 in pre-market. Netflix, we'll get back to 500. Uh, AMD, we'll get back to 520. Ulta, we'll get back to 470. NVIDIA, that's going past 500. So the key point is, Fatima, don't listen to a douche on the internet. You are 100% right, and there is a reason for that rule. 100% a reason for that rule. It's because you don't. If you gamble like this around earnings, you play a small portion of your portfolio on it. The large portion of your portfolio should be in buy and hold companies. Like two that report today, Apple and Amazon. Those are two really good companies. Now, Apple is trading at 191. Amazon is trading at 128. I don't know that I'd play either one of these into earnings. Earnings this week so far. This week's earnings are coming in lighter, not bad, than the recent run rate can sustain the prices. Guidance isn't as strong. If the economy is strong and it'll grow, this pullback is a buy. If the Fed increases, the the Fed um, uh, interest rate increases are just now taking effect, we're going to see more downside. So you've got to make the determination which place you think it's going to go. You have to make the determination of buying good companies or you can buy these other companies. You know, Palantir is still not making a profit, but they're in the war business and we've got a war going on in Ukraine and they're actually signing contracts with other countries. So I think Palantir is a good bet on that one. Uh, energy has come in super, super light compared to last year when oil was trading at 120 a barrel at this time. So it's coming in light. Devon went all the way up to 54. It's down to 49. So is it a buy? I think so. I think energy is going to go up. I just think, you know, PXD yesterday announced that they were reducing their dividend. That was completely expected. I'm still in that one. It's up at, let's see, PXD is at um, 227. So it's over its 200 swing. If you got it under 200, you still got your 10% and you got a decent dividend to to go along with. So Fatima, I completely agree with you. Do not listen to a douche on the internet. I am that douche on the internet. But understand, there are a lot more douches on the internet that will guide you to a different outcome. Uh, Here is Spy. 
and you're seeing SPY on the four hour, you've got that turnover. That turnover right there coming down. I think you, if we get continued downside, you're coming down to about 445 uh, on SPY. You're at 450 right now. We're at 449 in pre market. Um, you're seeing the MACD turnover. We're in the downfall. The RSI quickly went to 40 to 43. I think we have one more day of downside, but I do think around lunchtime, you're going to see this thing turn around a little bit. There's going to be something. Now, do I expect Apple earnings to come in super, super uh, hot today? I don't expect Apple to break 200 today. I expect Apple to release some decent earnings, nothing horrible. If it pulls under 190, I think if you don't have a position in Apple, you start a position. It's at 191 right now. If for some reason Apple decides to come down to the 170s, load up. Load up the Brinks truck. I mean, just back in twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 into Apple. You will not be disappointed in one or two years. Uh, they have so much cash. You know, maybe they announce some type of split. Uh, who knows? Amazon, I'm a little bit more worried about Amazon with the Google Cloud and the Microsoft Cloud. Um, slowing their growth and and uh, increasing their growth. It, where's their growth coming from? Is it really coming from Amazon and overall the cloud is, is falling down? I don't know. But all of this is really just a pullback in an uptrend. Remember, this was May. Uh, the algorithm has us in f- at 411 on SPY. And that was uh, May 11th. You've seen uh, at the end of May, you had this big pullback. At the middle of June, you had this big pullback. So I I think this is just another pullback in an upward trending market. If we look at the weekly on on SPY, you're still not even under the nine day. The nine day right there, you still have confirmation. Your 50 day is still turning positive. Your 200 day, still positive. So I'm not overly concerned about this, um, uh, but it is something to watch. Now, a couple of tweets yesterday. This was a great tweet. I will put this in the newsletter. All of this stuff will go in the newsletter. And if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, it's dailystockpick.substack.com. <clears throat> but that's the newsletter. Uh, it, I put it out every day, even if I don't do a, 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 a podcast. Strategist Dan Clifton on possible political imp- implications of Fitch. He raises a great uh, possibility that the government will shut down on October 1st another negative uh, catalyst right there. Um, I'll put that so you can watch it. I think he makes really, really good points. Uh, Another one, the biggest mistake investors can make, uh, downtown Josh Brown explains how uh, recency bias can cause people to miss out on stock gains. Great clip. I will put that in the newsletter. If you follow me on Twitter, I retweeted it. Great clip. Now, speaking of Sedge as my biggest loser, Brian Sullivan, this tweet is perfect. He says, how much is the Fed harming energy transition? Solar Edge should be another stark reminder that perhaps the biggest risk to solar uh, and and wind build out is higher interest rates. People aren't putting in solar here in the the United States. Demand fell 30% in the U.S. because interest rates are higher. And lower natural gas prices kept energy stable. So Enphase is the exact example of that. Um, You have to understand that that's exactly what brought SolarEdge down. It was the interest rates. It's what brought brought Enphase down. I thought Europe could overcome the U.S. uh, fall in SolarEdge, but they gave super weak guidance for the third quarter. Now, here's the thing. The question is, was Solar Edge really kind of uh, sandbagging and saying, hey, we're going to come in lower and this is an opportunity for us to bring the stock price down a little bit uh, and, and basically blow it out of the water in the second half? Who knows? But, you know, a- again, you have to make that determination on your own. Uh, one that uh, reported yesterday that actually was super, super strong. I thought the pullback was crazy. Um, it's trading at 101. Get Starbucks under 100. Because you're seeing a gap up here at 109, 113. It was a super strong quarter in, in China for Starbucks. I, I, I'll probably be adding this. Um, you know, I, I just don't see Starbucks is they're, they're, they're performing. They're, it's not a stock that's not performing. 
When this pulls back under 100, you should absolutely 100% buy it. That's what I've got in my notes is buy Starbucks under 100. You're seeing that 200 day at about 94. As it bounces off there, you're, you're going to start seeing if it gets down to 94, start buying it. Every time this one has, has crossed the 200 day, it's been a buying opportunity. Here's the 2018 pullback. Here's COVID. Here is the 2022 lows down at about 78, 79. It's a great company. Great company. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put in the newsletter uh, some of the uh, price swings that I talk about on um, some of the core portfolio. Amazon, Devon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Roblox, Shop, Snow, Tesla, Uber, SoFi. Uh, those are, are all the, the, the stocks that I will put swing prices on that I think you should buy under and sell over. In the newsletter, dailystockpick.substack.com. Let's talk about earnings. We talked a little bit about Qualcomm, and, and I'll do it right here. Here's the, 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 the look at Qualcomm and where I said, hey, um, you know, the upper range up here at about 150. If we look at a weekly on this one, uh, you can clearly see those two lines. The bottom, I'm thinking it's about 110. The top, I'm thinking it's about 150. So here in pre-market at 117, if you want to buy it, I don't think it's crazy. Uh, handset sales slowed. Uh, remember, Apple is not using Qualcomm in their handsets anymore. Handsets slowed, missed revenues, and earnings per share in line. I would say anything under 120 on this one is a good price. This one at its highs was around 190. I think this one continues to be a very, very good chip stock. Um, Robinhood reported first time, I want to point this out, first time they reported a gap profit. That's good, still not a good platform. Their users are down. This isn't something that you invest in. They're down at $11.70. I don't think that this one continues to be a, a, a $12 stock. I think it's more like an $8 stock down here. Again, they, they return to profit. I think it's good. Um, but I'm just not super, super crazy about it. Zillow reported earnings. They're down 2%. They killed earnings. They're just guidance was a little bit weak. And with that run up here, um, again, the run ups, not just the earnings are not justifying the run ups, uh, DoorDash, um, they missed earnings per share beat revenue. Q3 was better than expected. They're up 3%, uh, in pre-market, um, Etsy. This is one that I own. Beat earnings per share, revenue estimates. The Q3 guide was a little light. It reacted down. It's down 8%, 8% to $87. Um, buyers were an all-time high in the quarter. So I don't know if this is just an overreaction from that $88 price. To, you know, We got down to lows here. Uh, if we look at the weekly, you're below the 200-day. This one, in my mind, I think it d deserves to be up above the 200-day. Um, you know, it, it was a pandemic favorite up here at 262. You're not getting back to 262, but I, I think that 130, 140, I don't think that's overly justified on that one. Uh, Shopify, I talked about Shopify being the one that I really liked. They beat by a lot, a lot they beat by. Um Earnings per share estimates and revenue estimates. I will include Bradley Ferguson, the stock nerd. Uh, look at Shopify. Um, they killed it. Shipping faster, faster expansion. It went down. It's at $60. If you can get this under 60, this is an $80 stock by the end of the year. At some point in time, this is an $80 stock. They killed it. I don't believe that that pullback from 67, 68 where it was – I don't believe that's justified. I will be adding to my position on this one. Um, PayPal. PayPal is one that I bought. They beat. The problem was their operating margins. They're just not doing well. Uh, and Bradley Ferguson pointed this out uh, and others pointed it out too. When you listen to Shopify's quarterly earnings and the CEO talk about um, and how excited he is about the future and things, and then you listen to PayPal's quarterly uh, earnings. The CEO's just blah. I mean, he's not anything. 
I do think PayPal gets up here at some point in time to this $85. You can't argue PayPal went from $60 up to $75. In a two-month period, it covered that gap. It's going to cover the gap again up here. It's just pulling back a little. I may add to it. I already own a lot. I own a lot. I think my average purchase price is about $72. So I'm a little bit in the negative, but that was a a long-term buy. I bought significantly higher, I think, at about 80. I have dollar cost of my average way up in this one. Um, Oxy is one. This is under 60. Um, It's pulled back to 59.47 in pre-market. You can see their earnings. uh, They beat on earnings per share and revenue, both. Um, I want to point out this to you. The S&P heat map here from yesterday, all of these big names were down 4, 3, 2%. All of the big names were down that much. Notice they're all down. It's just a healthy pullback. Just a healthy pullback. It hurts to buy in these times, but I do think you you do buy in these times. Um, Let's talk about scans because I'm going to go through these quickly. Visa, there's not a lot of scans. Visa, 238.63. I don't think you buy up here. I think it's a little bit rich. Uh, If we look at a weekly on this one, you are close to uh, all-time highs. Uh, I just think that this one's a little too rich up at these levels. Um, S-Gen, C-Gen. This one, um, 193.03. You can see it's just pulling back under the 200-day. But this one has just had a crazy year so far. I mean, down at 140. So S-Gen does have a cross-up at 193. Maybe you play it up to 200, <clears throat> but S-Gen. colgate Palmolive, of crazy good earnings. Crazy good earnings. Um, 77.60. This one was trading yesterday in the 73 range. So on a, 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 a consumer goods company like that, when you get a $4 move in one day, a 5% move, Crazy, crazy good earnings. Uh, Lockheed Martin, they have a cross up four fifty eleven. I don't think this is a bad one. Eh, I'm just not a big fan. I mean, I'd rather invest in Palantir and something exciting. Look at the weekly. I mean, you know, the the move is going to be to five hundred, so maybe you have ten percent in this one. Lockheed Martin, again, war crimes are, uh, you know, war companies are doing well. Uh, RTX. This one has a cross up eighty seven. I do think at some point in time this fills the gap up to 96. That engine, uh, the, that the engine recall spooked the market. Absolutely spooked the market. And finally, EMR, uh, Emerson Electric, 95.51 is the cross up. You got your earnings, uh, your uh, dividend payment coming out here on August 10th, my birthday. Um, I, I, I listen. It's a it's a utility, I think, is what it is. But uh, that one crossed up. Okay, if you want to follow me at all, linktree dot uh, daily st- slash daily stock picks, l i n k t r dot e e slash daily stock pick. You can get Trend Spider up to twenty five percent off. Visible. The big one that you can really get is this third one. It's twelve free stocks on Weeble. I've talked about it before. Uh, this is a great Weeble is a great great platform. If you're in Robinhood, get out of Robinhood. Try and take your money out. Try and see how difficult that is. Try it. They will charge you $70 to close your account. Uh, Weeble charges you nothing to close your account. You can transfer stuff between Fidelity and Weeble. I did it. I've got $1,000 in Weeble. I put that in in January of this year. Right now, live update. That, is, that uh, portfolio is worth $1,525. Top three stocks. Caterpillar. I'm up 8%. Uh, Boeing, I'm up 6%. Apple, I'm up 35%. So yeah, Um, those are the top three stocks that I have in that portfolio. Uh, I'm at $1,500, $1,526. So I'm up 50%. That's how much Apple I have versus the the rest of the stuff. Uh, But Webull is a great one. Sign up with this link. You get up to 12 free stocks. Um, you know, if you just put put a thousand dollars in there, uh, if you want the newsletter down here, you want Spotify, you want YouTube, you want anything, it's all down there. Savvy Trader, follow my trades on Savvy Trader. 
Uh, I've got two portfolios on Savvy Trader. One is the trading portfolio. The other one is the core portfolio. Let me explain the difference. You should subscribe to both. The trading portfolio in one month, it's down 1%. The core portfolio is up 1.28%. The trading portfolio are stocks that I'm in and out of. I'm holding some of them, but I, I'm probably not holding them for very long. I may be trading them. I may be trading them for longer. Who knows? NVIDIA's in there. I'm not, probably not getting rid of NVIDIA. I'm just going into it. Um, core portfolio are 35 stocks that are great to, uh, to buy and hold. It's an even-weighted portfolio. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Costco is the largest position in this portfolio, Um Let's see, allocation. Costco is the largest position in this portfolio. Uh, and it, it's a, just 100 shares of each stock. And it's up 1%. Now, the overall portfolio value is crazy. I think it's like $600,000. I would, yeah, $650,000. I would not expect anyone to have, buy $650,000 of this. And I would allocate it significantly different um, than that. But look at that. I mean, look, overall... Just look at that. And all I did was on one day, I bought 100. So follow me on Savvy Trader. I think you follow both portfolios because as I pull things in and out of the core portfolio, I will remove them from here. Uh, If a stock like, for instance, Moderna is in this one, uh, I don't think Moderna is a very good, healthy stock to buy and hold. But I do think Moderna is in the core portfolio because this one's on hype trade. Once they announce a uh, flu vaccine, that one's going to fly. But I take it in and out of the portfolio every now and then. I don't invest in it. So uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on the link tree. You can find me right here on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. There's YouTube. There's Twitch. There's Substack. There is Apple Podcasts. There's a tip jar uh, right there with Venmo. You can email me. Say you don't have social, uh, social media. You can email me right there. So I, I like all, you know, all of this, this link tree is the way to get in touch with me. Uh, Savvy Trader is the way to follow me. The uh, daily uh, Stock Picks newsletter is a great way to get your uh, daily dose of Gary in your email box, whatever you want. Okay. I am out of here. I'm going to post this. You guys take care. Have fun. I will talk to you tomorrow. Well, no, I am traveling tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's a travel day. So I will talk to you guys Monday. Oh,